Morning world, this is the first of a number of videos today. It is 9.31am on Saturday the 14th of October 2023. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yesterday at, I think it was, here's the exact time, 10, not min, 19 minutes and 43 seconds past 10 in the morning, Eastern Daylight Time, in Cape Canaveral, yesterday a space probe was launched into the sky. It was called the Psyche probe and it is being sent to the asteroid Psyche where it will hit in about six years time, 2029. <coughs> it's a 2.2 billion mile journey to an asteroid that lies somewhere out between Mars and Jupiter. So why would we be sending something out to Psyche? The probe is called Psyche, the asteroid is called Psyche. Well, there's about a million and a half different asteroids out there, but only nine seem to have the same properties as Psyche, and Psyche is by far the biggest of those nine. Psyche seems to be comprised of at least 60% iron and nickel. We've yet to see any close-up pictures. The web camera isn't able to focus on it it's in a completely different part of the sky and the best pictures we've got so far are quite fuzzy but it suggests that there's iron cliffs cliffs made of iron so how can a, how can a body of rock that's 275 miles wide at its widest be made of iron well there's two main theories one is that when the universe was forming, a lump of electrical, a lump of metal became a kind of magnet that attracted other lumps of metal to it, and it formed into this body in space, which is basically a billion ton lump of iron and metal, and it's still attracting, magnetizing minor bits of dust from the, from the sky. The second is that it's the remains of a planet that's had its surface ripped off and exposing its iron molten core, which is cooled down on exposure to deep space. We don't know. And we'll find out in 2029. The, if there's, a, there's a lot of cynicism out there amongst the astrological community about why are we sending this probe out to Psyche now when it's a six mile journey, six, six year journey. <clears throat> And a lot of people say, well, it's for mining, you know, we'll be getting the, 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 the mining of the iron and nickel. But actually, no, because it's so far away. I mean, at its closest to Earth, it's three times further out than Mars. So the cost of mining it and bringing those, those ores even closer to Earth, let alone back to Earth, is, is just silly. But instead, NASA suggests that we might be able to use this asteroid as a kind of fueling base where we could send probes out into deep space and somehow convert the iron and nickel into fuel. So it's a kind of refueling dump. I mean, this is all science fiction. This is way out there. Okay, so let's actually look at the astrology of this. We've looked at the astronomy. What about the astrology? Firstly, the asteroid psyche. About 30 years ago, a book was published called Asteroid Goddesses, by Demetra George, which is the definitive book on um, asteroids still to this day in contemporary astrology. And um, she published an ephemeris for Psyche and a basic translation of it, which astrologers in recent years have picked up on. Now, I don't use minor asteroids such as Psyche in my readings unless people specifically ask me to. But... Even then, I only give it a maximum of one or even half of one degree orb. But um, Psyche seems to be the ability to be either psychically or at the very least empathically resonant with someone else. If someone's Psyche is on top of your sun, they're going to get to you. If someone's Psyche is on top of your moon, they're going to naturally empathise with what you're feeling and feel it empathically. 
And the same as if it's in reverse. If your psyche is on top of someone's sun or moon, then you're going to get, you're really going to get them. It's not giving you an insight into their character, but it is helping you resonate very much with what it is that's at their core, how they feel at a deep level and um, where they're coming from inside themselves. Psyche is very much about one's ability to psychically resonate with other. Whether that is, whether that other is partner or friend or family or cat or dog or animal. Um, this is one of those things that's it's a bit weird in astrology. Once and that once something has been named, then it begins it is given that name, and then the qualities of that name come into the interpretation of it. I touched on this a few months ago when I commented about how one of my students had looked up her name and the asteroid list and found that the asteroid with her name was on her ascendant at the moment of her birth, which was kind of spooky. And that unleashed a whole plethora of people emailing me, phoning me and, and um, commenting on YouTube about how they've done the same. And there's so much stuff out there about how... Asteroids get their name and then how those asteroids are relevant to the named person's chart, whether it's through them and or through their children and or their partners. Way, way outside the realm of coincidence. But this is just one more suggestion, one more uh, indication that we actually live in a much more holo uh, holographic, wrong, a live universe, somewhat holographic universe, that we live in a universe that is much more... Um, complete, intuitive, resonant, harmonious, and that we are an active part of it far more than we've been led to believe so far. So let's look at the horoscope. What was happening at the moment that that probe took off yesterday morning at 10, 19, in from Cape Canaveral in Florida? Well, the sun and the moon were in Libra. We're heading into the eclipse later today. Scorpio was rising. Mars had just moved into Scorpio, so the square to Pluto is fading away. And Saturn and Venus opposition is fading away. Psyche itself, the asteroid, is currently at two to three degrees of Sagittarius. And there was 27 and a half degrees of Scorpio rising. So the asteroid psyche came up on the horizon over Cape Canaveral about 15 to 20 minutes after the psyche probe took off. But when I look at the chart itself, OK, so it's not a void moon. It is being launched in the shadow of a uh, ring of fire eclipse, which is pretty nah, not recommended. In the horoscope of the launch, the sun was strongly opposite Chiron. Mercury was coming into opposition with Chiron. The moon will pass opposite Chiron today. Mars is still square Pluto by three degrees, separating. Venus is still opposing Pluto by three, uh, Saturn by three degrees, separating. It's not that particularly an auspicious chart. So it leads me to assume, unfortunately, that this probe is not going to be able to fulfil its mission, unlike many of the other successful probes that have recently brought back some very interesting results. I'm not saying it won't get to there. There may be a problem sending telemetry or information back. We don't know. Let's see. Let's wish it the best. But it's going to be fascinating. We're discovering more and more of this, uh, of our solar system, and by extension, the universe. The, the physics that we thought ruled our solar system is now becoming increasingly uh, doubtful, to say the least. So, um, yeah, let's hope this probe works. OK, more on this in coming years, no doubt. Hope I'm still alive when the probe gets there. Catch you later on this one. Bye.